Hello, welcome to another edition of Let's Play. Uh, this time we're going to go back and we're going to play the original King's Quest again, but this is actually a remake that they made in 1990 with the uh, SCI engine, the Sierra Creative Interpreter. Um, they After they did King's Quest 4, after they made King's Quest 4 with the better graphics and sound, they decided to go back and remake the original in 1990. Um, Wait, is this King's Quest? This is King's Quest 1. And as you see, it's SCI, Sierra Creative Interpreter, KQ1 SCI. Let's give this a start, and we'll hear it with the Roland MT32 music and the updated graphics and sound for the time, at least. Here we go. Use the arrow keys that enter the select location. The new theme song. This, this was actually this is actually the last um, King's Quest game that had a parser interface, which means you type. After after this, they had all uh, point and click. You are Sir Graham, the bravest knight in Daventry. King Edward, the benevolent, aged ruler of Daventry, has summoned you to the castle for reasons unknown. He's once again Sir Graham the Knight. He's once again Sir Graham the Knight and not King Graham because we're going back to before he became king. This is the story of how he became king. I am at your service, my liege, my king. I am an old man, Sir Graham, perhaps too old to carry the weight of this crown. My bones ache, my hands tremble. I'm afraid my time on earth grows short. But enough about me. Great misfortunes have befallen Daventry since the loss years ago of three magical treasures. I have chosen you, the finest knight in all of Daventry, to search for these lost treasures. Only then can this kingdom be restored to its former glory. And only then may I rest with the knowledge that my people are safe. The first treasure is a magic mirror that foretells the future. The second is a magical shield that protects the bearer from all mortal harm. The third and last is an enchanted chest that is forever filled with gold. I know what I ask is difficult, nay, perhaps impossible. The dangers are many. But you are brave and pure of heart. That is why I chose you to volunteer. If you succeed, you will inherit my crown and will rule the realm of Daventry as her rightful heir. Go, Sir Graham, and know that the fate of Daventry lies in your hands. Take heart. Take heart, my king. I shall not fail you. There goes Sir Graham off on his quest for the crown. <laughs> hear the intro music just a little bit. Um, so yeah, they, they came out with this game. They started working on this in 1989, I believe. And it's the last King's Quest game to have a parser interface. The last King's Quest game where you actually type things in. Because after this, they uh, they decided that it was too difficult for a lot of people to figure out what words the computer understands. So they moved to a point and click interface, which uh, you'll see in King's Quest V. And from then on, all adventure games were pretty much done with point and click interfaces. It was very rare to see an adventure game with a parser interface. Personal, personally, I prefer the parser interface. I like being able to type what I want to do. Um, let's hear the rest of this song before we start. Nice 
nice Roland MT32 sound. fashion MIDI synthesizer, the Roland MT32, with the sound effects of the portcullis, point and click for was moving. Was that his dad? No, it wasn't his dad. Sir Graham was just a knight. He would never had any kids, but King Edward the Benevolent. Oh. So that's how he became king. So what do you think we should do first? Uh, Look around? Yeah. You're standing outside the King Edward's castle, which is surrounded by a serpent-filled moat. By the way, if you walk down, you walk down here. Guess what happens? He eats you. He eats you. Yep. <laughs> and once again, I failed at King's Quest because I died right at the beginning. They replaced the alligators in the original version. The moat monsters appreciate your good taste. That's the death music. All right, so let's actually take this seriously now and we'll start our quest. All right. Go this way first. Some nice birds chirping here. You are standing outside King Edward's castle, which is surrounded by a serpent-filled moat, same as before. By the way, if you if you talk to those, you could, you could do the plus to speed up in this too. I think, I think maybe I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, there we go. Nope, maybe I'm wrong. Is it this plus? Yeah, I guess you can't do it with this. All right, you could try to talk to the guards, but they're kind of like the. British guards that are these stone faced guards must have been trained not to converse with anybody. They ignore you, Sir Graham. So they pretty much just stand there and you can do stuff to them, like make faces at them and stuff, and they won't say a word. They're just uh, stone faced guards. I don't have a rock. Do you notice I don't have anything? I'm carrying nothing. Yeah, I guess to speed up, you have to actually go into the menu. Oh, no, it, it is plus for faster. But the plus isn't working for some reason. This way, you go fast. Oh. You talk to the monsters. Okay. Talk to monster. The serpents would rather eat you than talk to you. Okay. <laughs> look around here. Ooh, now I'm going fast. I guess it's just in that screen I don't go fast. All right. That's weird. All right. Let's look around. You're in the shady forest clearing. A large rock rests in the middle of the clearing. Okay, let's look at rock. You see Keep nothing special. Rock. All right, let's try and take it. We'll save. Starting out. Take rock. There's nothing useful or interesting about this rock. You could throw it at them. Let's try pushing it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> the moving rock rolls downhill and right into you. A crushing defeat. <laughs> All right. It didn't crush them, it crushed you. Yeah. So let's try pushing this rock from the other side. There we go. With a single shove, you manage to push the rock a few feet, revealing a shallow hole underneath. The, um, the other you, you played the old version? Yeah. There is an intricately carved dagger in the hole. Take the dagger. You reach into the hole and grasp the dagger, being careful not to cut yourself. Let me see. Now I got a dagger. This is a, a fine silver stab dagger. Stab them! With a very sharp edge. You want me to stab the guards? All right. No! Don't! Don't? Okay. They're gonna get mad. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, we've 
this kind one. of already know what we're doing since we beat the original version. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what we could do in this game, see what's different. Finding plenty of footholds in the coarse bark of the tree, you easily clamber up the trunk to the branches above. Dee-dee-dee, skiddy-dee-dee, up the tree. Slow, slow down a bit, because I'm up high in a tree. Far out on a huge branch, there's a nest. Yeah, yeah um, <laughs> when we did this, all right, don't go on the sides that much, but you kind of have to. Mm -hmm. uh, save, did you save? I save. Okay. I'm just going to point my point and click my way over there. Might be a little easier. Isn't that what you did? Yeah, but it's easier in this game for some reason than in the, in the point and click version. Alright, let's see. There's a perfect shimmering golden egg lying in the nest. This game was actually remade again um, very quite recently, like a few years ago. A point and, point and click version. Um, and of course, on your way back and getting back, you might fall. Yeah. The point-and-click version was actually a lot harder to navigate this tree, but it was remade not by Sierra but by by fans. Uh, AGD Adventure Game something Adventure Game Developers Interactive or something. Hey, hey, we just need an eight on the, at the end, and then we're good. Then we got the full score. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're very close, aren't we? <laughs> yes, we, we just a, need an eight. You are holding a lovely golden egg. Now there are other, there's actions, there's F4 to duck, F6 to jump. Can he dance? So you can duck with F4, and you could also jump with that. Can he dance? Sir Graham, please try to find another word for dance. He can't dance. Um, but he can jump and he can duck. And the reason for jumping and ducking becomes apparent after a while here. Here's a door. Parent. Apparent. 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 Like obvious. Curiously, oh. a large door has been built into the steep mountainside. Alright, let's open this up. Door. The huge door is locked. You can't open it. Is this the one where the rabbit spits at you? No, that's seven. That's King's Quest seven. Oh. We'll do that one with Gwen. Like when he spits at you. <laughs> Okay, let's look around here. There's a large walnut tree surrounded by several pine trees. What do you think we should do here? Should we take a walnut? Yeah. Okay. You choose a big, meaty-looking walnut from the bunch scattered around. Let's see what's in that walnut. When you open the walnut, you discover the nut inside is pure gold. Why do we keep on finding gold things? Because gold is good, and it, it will make our, our country more rich. Although once we find the magic chest, I guess it won't make much of a difference, because the chest is forever filled with gold. But it's still good to find more gold, like a gold walnut. Um, so yeah, we got, we got a gold walnut. Um, and I believe this is a place where enemies come. Let's see, you are in an eerie, desolate part of the forest. Yes, yeah, so we got to be careful here. So we could call this, well, we already saved at the gold walnut, so there's no point in saving again. Uh, let's look around here, though. Might be ooh, things that are useful. How is it better graphic? Well, if you look, there's actually more pixels on the screen than in the old. Be careful, there's a sorcerer lurking nearby, just waiting to try out his newest incantation. The sorcerer wants to cast his brand new paralysis spell on you. Hi. Let's talk to him first. Hi. The sorcerer is a man of few words and many dangerous spells. Hi. Hi. Please try something else, Sir Graham. Okay, let's see what he does. He turns you into frog. The sorcerer casts his paralysis spell, freezing you out to the spot. Satisfied with his deviltry, he departs, leaving you at the mercy of the forest creatures. Let's hope there are no dangerous creatures skulking about until the spell wears off. There is a small dwarf right nearby. Be, care be careful, this sly little chap is trouble. 
The sneaky little dwarf caught you by surprise. Did he steal anything from you? Let's see. Well, I can't do anything. I'm actually frozen. But it looks like it's wearing off. So let's wait until that wears off. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break while it's doing that. <laughs> Just let you know, I'm awesome. The perilous spell has worn off. You are free to move about again. But beware of the sorcerer's return. So look, he stole the gold walnut. See that? And we lost points. So let's go back to before. Now we just need an eight. Mm -hmm. We just need an eight. But look, when I went back to the gold walnut part, I have my 21 points back. So it's not a good idea to let that dwarf steal from you if you want to get the full score of the game at the end. So you want to stay away from that dwarf. And you want to stay away from that wizard because he paralyzes you. And here he comes again. Let's, let's run away from him. Go over here. Let's look around here. This is a pretty little alpine lake. There's a cool breeze here, and the lake shimmers softly in the quiet mountain air. Hmm, nice little place to swim. Swim, swim. Sir Graham, please try to find another word for pool. See, things like that, like, um, couldn't understand words like pool and stuff. That's why they got rid of the parser interface and, and put a point and click because you didn't have to type the things like that. Sure. Sure. It would understand everything you did if you used point and click. This part of the forest is dark and creepy. Shadows seem to jump out at you, and the trees are gnarled and misshapen. Mm. With a streak. What's that? Yeah, they do look like arms. With a screech and a cackle, a witch swoops down from the skies above. Look out, she dips and turns and tries to catch you. you I'm going to save here because I want to show you something real quick. You run away. If you stay here... Oops, I spelled it wrong. Look at the witch. It's not your friendly type of witch. The wicked witch is not interested in chit-chat. She's got you! She grabs you by the neck with an iron grip and carries you off to her cottage deep in the forest. So yeah, she carries you up here in the sky. <laughs> I have got you! Graham! <laughs> Wicked witch flew over her cottage. She dropped you straight through the roof and into her cage. Who knows what sinister plan she has in store for you? <laughs> the witch has turned you into a gingerbread man. Or is that a graham cracker? <laughs> Alright, but here's what you're supposed to do when the witch comes. Remember that duck thing I told you about? If you duck, she'll miss you. And this was actually a feature in the original version of the game, too. You could duck and, and jump, and you could duck to avoid her. Go! But I didn't do it in the uh, original Let's Play because I forgot about it. So let's see what's up here now. Is she gonna get you again? Here's her house. You're near a little gingerbread house in the forest clearing. So let's. Uh, Wait, isn't she in her house though? Well, let's find out. Save first. Okay. The door is made of candy canes. As you knock, on the candy cane door, a squeaky voice from the inside says, Who is there? I love visitors, especially young, tender ones. Come in, come in. Let's eat the house. 
As you begin to eat the house, a squeaky voice from somewhere says, Nibble, nibble, little mouse, who is nibbling at my house? Want to eat one of the little gingerbread people? No. Come it's on. a little, it's the <laughs> little kids. Eat gingerbread. At least you're eating a boy. Okay? <laughs> uh, eat <but> boy. <laughs> you don't know how long they've been standing there. Eating them probably wouldn't be a wise thing to do. Yeah, why would you feed a little kid? <laughs> Alright, let's open the door. I'm in, I'm in. She, so she's in the house. Talk to which? Hello, I've come to visit. Now is not a good time to try and start a conversation. Rats, she has cast some spell on you to keep you from escaping. The witch remarks, Oh, how nice of you to come for dinner. <laughs> cackle, cackle. And I can't move. She looks you over carefully, then states... Are you paralyzed? <laughs> yep. You're a little too scrawny for my appetite, but I think you're going to make a lovely dessert. Oh. And there I go. Dead again. So how do you think we should deal with this witch, Samantha? Uh, knock on the house. All right. You think we could go in when she's not home, though? When is she not going to be home? Well, we could always find out. If, if we nibble on the house and we hear her, then we know she's home. But if we nibble on the house and we don't hear her, yum, the house tastes even better than it looks. She's not home. But what if she's asleep? Look, we have the whole house to ourselves. Can't look. Witch, no. <laughs> witch's house. All right, let's look around. In contrast to its delightful exterior, the inside of the gingerbread house looks dark and ominous. Too bad you can't eat the inside. Let's look at the cauldron here. <coughs> the pot is hot enough to burn your hand. The fire must have been burning for a long time. Let's open this cupboard here. Bird. Sitting on the shelf is a delicious piece of Swiss cheese. So we just got some cheese. You take the cheese from the cabinet. Let's close the cupboard so she doesn't find out. Off in the distance you hear a high squeaky voice say, I can smell someone tasty in my house. Alright, let's go. Let's hide. The witch mutters, I'm going to get my cauldron ready to cook someone for dinner. Yum! <laughs> the witch mumbles, After I get the cauldron nice and hot, I will be ready to have someone for dinner. Giggle. <laughs> Giggle. <laughs> so what should we do? So they don't understand cool, but they understand giggle. Yeah. The witch mutters, the cauldron is heating up nicely. I wonder who will be my dinner guest. Do you think we could do anything to the witch while she's standing on that little stool there? Over her is cauldron? the cottage cheese bad? Cottage cheese? It's Swiss cheese. Oh. But uh, what what did they do to her in um, Hansel and Gretel? How did they get rid of the witch? They pushed her. Want to try that? Sure. The witch sees you! Don't oh, don't, don't! Rat, she has cast some spell on you to keep you from escaping. Okay, so that's actually what you're supposed to do. But it, it's a little bit difficult, because if she sees you... Do you know how to uh, Yeah, you just gotta be a little careful. Okay. You could be the little kids. Right now. Okay, so let's go back to the witch's house here. Be a little more careful. You gotta stay behind her. She saw me. Ah. Okay, this time I'm not looking. Okay. Here we go again. I don't 
don't remember it being this difficult. But let's try it again anyway. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's harder than I remember it being. All right, let's try it again. Once she takes me back out. Did they? Did she just cut off your head, or just cook your whole body? She just cooked my whole body. And turned it into a gingerbread. Maybe it's maybe it's because we waited too long in the room. I wonder if that's the reason. <laughs> Gingerbread again. Graham cracker, rather. Alright. Let's, let's look at this note. It's just a plain wooden bedside table. It looks like there's a note line on it. The witch mutters the call to the Let's take the note. You grab the note from the table. Take the note. There's a message written on the note. Sometimes it is wise to think backwards. To the bed. The witch's bed looks hard and uncomfortable. The witch says, My cauldron is now the perfect temperature. It is time to invite someone for dinner. <laughs> I think we have to do it quick. We have to be real quick if we're going to defeat this witch. And there I go again. The Graham Cracker. <laughs> I'm going to load actually this one. Because... <coughs> Let me eat the house. This will give me more time. So she's in the house now. We'll even come back and see if she's in the house this time. Nope, she's still there. Let's try it again. Eat house. Nope. It's just a random chance, I suppose. All right. Eat the house. Hey, Jake. Okay, she's not home. Let's go inside. Okay. You wanna watch? Sure. Let's open this cupboard here. Take our cheese. 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 Close cupboard so she doesn't know that we're here. We will take this note that's on the table here. What are you guys in? Don't we're, in cheese. we're in a witch's yeah. house. Read the note. Ah, oh, here she comes. So you have to not wait a long time. I yeah. Uh, oh, where is she? Here she is. I am going to get my cauldron go, 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 ready go, go, go. to cook someone for dinner. After I get the cauldron nice and hot, it will be ready to have someone for dinner. Hee hee hee. Alright. Can you fight her? Push. Push witch. <laughs> <laughs> With a mighty shove, you courageously push the wicked witch into the pot. Her wild screams are suddenly cut off as she melts away into the oily green slime in the pot. Congratulations. Thank you. I'll be out here all night. <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> this is a pretty short game, so you should be able to do the whole it thing is? in one shot. Yeah, it's, it's the shortest of all the King's Quest games. All right, let's read the note real quick. Oh, you could use the dagger. Sometimes it's wise to think backwards. I think think you have backwards. to save the children. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. what are the children? They're in the gingerbread. Cheat girl. Oh yeah, just like that. Mm -hmm. You won't be needing that on your quest, your grand. Eat girl. Huh. Nope. <laughs> All right. Why would you ever eat a little girl? Because it's fun. Huh. All right, let's go. Oh, do you eat ponies too? What? Okay. It usually you happens it. is if you push <laughs> a witch in, into a pot and she dies, <laughs> all of her evil magic goes away, so she's destroyed. <laughs> wow. I think I think we did that. I think we accomplished that definitely today. Now we're awesome people. I mean, I was already awesome. <laughs> Wait, what was that? Bird? No, no there was something. It looked kind of like a dog. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Go back. As you start to cross the bridge, a huge hulking troll stomps into view and blocks your way. Nope, nope. Pushes you to talk to Troll. Well, what have we got here? You think you're gonna cross my bridge, do you? Not for free, eh? Alright, let's see. <coughs> we'll call this Troll. Troll <coughs> You misspelled witch. Yeah, I know. Okay, so, how do you think we should get past this Troll? Um, well, let him see what we have. What you have, or maybe... We have a dagger, a note, a cheese, and cheese. Um, gold egg, and gold wallet. Maybe he wants to eat to bed. Okay. Give, Give cheese, cheese to, to, to troll. Your skimpy offering doesn't impress the troll. Anything else? Gold egg. Give gold egg to troll. Now look at our points. It's 37 now. You give the gold egg to the troll and it appears to satisfy him. He tromps off, leaving the bridge clear for you to cross. See how we lost points for doing that? Why? So there, that means there's a better way to do it. So let's let's find out. We'll try kill troll. The troll is bigger than you, stronger than you, and much, much meaner than you. Better not even try it. Maybe you can use the dagger. How do you want to use the dragger? Stab the troll? Dragger? Nah, that doesn't work. Let's see. What do you want the gold walnut? What you? Well, you lose points. If you give if you if you give away your treasure, you lose points. You want to have more treasure. Let's look around here. You see a fragrant patch of clover growing in this lush meadow. Well, do you remember how? Yeah, I do. The unusual clover glistens in the middle of the patch. Yeah, I'll do it eventually. I can't do it yet, though. Should we take the four-leaf clover? Yeah. Okay, there we go. We got a four-leaf clover. Maybe you can give the four-leaf clover to him. Maybe. Well, he knows. He knows. <coughs> you know what you're supposed to give him? Mm -hmm. And I told him to do Fairy Godmother. Gentle Sir Graham. You want to do her voice? Sure. Uh, Gentle no. Sir Graham, I am your fairy godmother. <laughs> <laughs> your quest is indeed noble. What little aid I can offer you is this protective magic spell. Effective, but a little wild. Okay, cool. So now we've got a protective spell to protect us from bad guys. I shall be watching over you, Sir Graham. <laughs> Alright. If Sir Graham talks at all, I want to do his voice. <laughs> he probably doesn't talk. He does talk. Oh, he does? Oh, he, he did a little bit in the beginning. He did. Ow! You see a brick border surrounded by a well-kept garden. This is a well-tended carrot patch. The carrots look tempting to a hungry traveler. You pluck the plump orange carrot from the ground. Yay, now we got a carrot. Now do you know what to do? You I do. The right thing to get past we it. have part of, part of it. Well, what is it? Mm. Wandering along the banks of a beautiful lake, you see a cute little elf. Oh, I'll see, I'll see you. If you get a little closer to the elf. The elf is impressed by your friendliness and responds by handing you an elegant little ring. I'll do well. Okay. I've had my eye on 
on the Instagram. Me thinks you might enjoy this little trinket. For just a wee bit of time, it has the power to make ye invisible. Oh, it's just like... It's the one oh, ring. May, may <laughs> give, give ye as much entertainment as ye has given me this day. Yay. With that, the elf vanishes. Bling! Okay. Does he... Does he know Santa? Because it's... He's probably delivering presents also because it's Christmas. <laughs> it's the one ring. Do, let's see. Do you have to give him the ring? Well, it might come in handy. It turns you invisible. So we you can never try know. going into the house. Yeah, it's locked. Do you know how to get in? You need a key. And in order to get the key, you have to get past the troll. Um. What's this here? You notice a small hole at the base of one of the craggy boulders in the center of the clearing. What is that? The hole appears to go deep down through the rock into the ground below. You can barely make out a faint greenish glow somewhere far inside. Let's feel around in there. Mr. Graham, please try to... Oh, it doesn't understand hand. All right. It's over here. A snake. Well. Up in there. A large moss covered tree surrounds a shallow swampy lake. The huge snake is watching you very closely and its intentions are less than friendly. Even if the snake could hear you, it wouldn't have anything to say. It's gonna come after you, I know. I got the protective spell. You'll wind up with a useless dead snake and a guilty conscience. Uh, get out of here. Why are you guilty? Hmm? I know, but doesn't it only... Um, doesn't it only go for a little time? Yeah, it'll wear off after a while. <sighs> Let's see what's up here. It's a good... Good time to explore the scary forest while I have this. Mm -hmm. I know, but it might wear well off. Yeah. The baddest of times. A little hut. Yeah, let's go back there after this wears off. I just want to see huh? over here. Huh? Wait, what? What? There's a little hut. Ooh, look, a castle. There's a mushroom on the meadow on the other side of the raging river. Look, there's a castle. I yeah, that's the cat. That's Castle Daventry. Jump across river. Please try something else, Sir Grand. <laughs> I guess the protective spell doesn't protect us from drowning. <laughs> the raging current pulls you under, never to be found. <laughs> have to get that mushroom some other way. Do you need the mushroom? Eventually, yeah. Uh... Why? This is a serene mountain lake with a small beach of pebbles on its edge. You'll find out. Don't worry. Let's take the pebbles. You grab a handful of pebbles. Yay! Oh, I thought <coughs> You see the back of an old tumble-down <coughs> cottage, badly in need of repair. Maybe you can use the invisibility ring to sneak in there. You see a cottage in shambles. It saddens you to think that somebody might still live there. The woodcutter speaks to you, his voice broken with sorrow. We would welcome you to our home, Sir Knight, but we have no food for so long. My beautiful wife cannot even rise from her bed. I fear she may die soon. The woodcutter, still holding his wife's hands and gazing at her pale face, does not seem to hear you. The 
woodcutter's poor wife appears to be near death. What about the cheese? The woman is laying in bed, pale and still. Her husband is seated on the bed, holding her hand. Right, Maybe, oh, they could, say, they could say hand, but they can't understand hand. The woodcutter accepts your meager gift of food, but look, I lost points for doing that. Thank you, Sir Knight. This will help for a while. So you're better off not giving her the cheese. I don't, but it's you a best... good deed. Yeah, it is a good deed, but there's a better way to, to, to help them. How? I'll show you in a bit. You best be careful, young Graham. The mystic protective spell of mine has weakened and departed. All right, so let's uh, go back to here, and we'll see if we can help them some other way. Um... trying to find something to give them. Did I already take the pebbles? Yeah. <coughs> I don't think I did before I saved. I didn't, yeah. Okay. Let's what did you wrap? Save it as pebbles. Pebbles come in handy. Okay, let's continue exploring our landscape here. Oh, there goes my magic spell, so I'm going to have to be careful. Well, you could use the invisibility then. Yep. To sneak past them. You're in a quiet part of the forest. There's an old rotted stump here. You're not close enough to see into the log. You peer into the darkness of the inside of the log, but there's nothing at all inside. Look in here. Let's look at the stump. From here you see the stump is very old and rotting away. Look in the hole. Look in the stump. Inside the rotting stump you notice a small leather pouch. Take pouch. As no, is that the last part? No. As you lift the pouch from the stump, you feel its content shifting inside. Got a pouch. <coughs> You're holding a plain leather pouch. Look in pouch, cause Cautiously, you open the pouch and see many sparkling, flashing diamonds. Quickly, you close it again so as not to lose any. So I see we got a lot of points for that. The more treasures you have at the end of this game, the more points you get. It's very easy to to beat this game without getting many points. But you want to see if you can get the most points you can get in this game. Like completing quests in the right way. Oh, look, a goat. Someone has built a small goat pen here. Okay, let's open this gate. Uh oh. How do you think we can lure this goat? Um, let's see. What do you. Well, the. They like to eat leather. What? They like to eat leather. Leather? No. <laughs> no. Of course, it's the carrot. All right, let's lure goat with carrot. We need to get a bit closer. That goat's going to kill you. There we go. Very clever. You tempt the goat with the carrot, and he begins to follow you around. You've made a friend. I want to hear the rest of that song. You had better wait for the goat. He may not follow you. You want to name him Bob? Bob. You can name him. <laughs> goat named Bob. Alright, so let's... Where do you think we should use this goat, guys? Um... Well, maybe you can use it because it can make milk for the... Did you guys ever read The Three Billy Goats Gruff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Now you I have can... to get three Billy Goats? <laughs> I think you only need the one. Then you Is should that's... name him Billy. How do you name him? 
He stopped following you. Uh oh. As you start to cross the bridge, a hulking troll stomps into view and blocks your way. It is a well-known fact that goats hate trolls intensely. You move aside and let the goat take care of this wretched, nasty troll. Oh, the goat? That's the way it's... Oh, okay, that, that <laughs> the, makes sense. The goat lowers his head and runs straight for the troll, butting him right off the bridge and into the river below. That's the last you'll see of that troll. <laughs> He helps you. Uh-huh. His, his mission's accomplished. Ooh. Hello, hello. Goat's name, Bob. <laughs> you see a wizened old gnome sitting in front of his house, whittling. Name him Steve. <laughs> Welcome, Sir Graham. I have been expecting you. I have something that will be of great use to you. But first, Sir Graham, you must answer this riddle. I'll give you three guesses. What is my name? Steve? Okay. How in the world did you think of that? That's not even close. You still have two guesses. No. Do you know what fairy tale this is from? Who is the gnome that would Rumpel let you... Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin. Ooh, you're very close. Very close, but not quite right. Okay, you you take this one. Okay. Now, let... let you have only one guess left. Because I did one, then, she, then you did one. Well, for a hint, let's let's look. Let's read that note that we got from the witch's house. There's a message written on the note. Sometimes it is wise to think backwards. Oh, Stiltskin Rumple. It's actually N I K S Skin T L I T. See Stiltskin backwards. E L P M U R Rump see it's Rumpel Stiltskin backwards. R U M P L E S Stiltskin. Nick Stlit Sulpamer. That's his name. So if you when you watch this you <laughs> might want to write that down. Yeah, and actually in the original version it was even harder because it was written in retrograde. It was his name in retrograde, which is what? very hard to explain. It it's basically you write the alphabet forwards one way and then you write it backwards underneath it and whatever letter it corresponds to like you circle the letter that's underneath it that's the letter you use so it'd be, it was a really really complicated puzzle but they made it a little easier in this remake that's right outstanding i didn't think you were that clever as a, as a reward for your sharp intellect here are some beans they're no ordinary beans but it's up to you to find out why somebody as smart as yourself should have no problem at all <laughs> Well, step over here so I can give them to you. Here you are. Good luck on your quest. And incidentally, if you guess his name wrong, he gives you the key to that door. He doesn't give you magic beans. He gives you a key to the door. But you don't get as many points. So, but don't um, you have to get into that door? Well, as a matter of fact, you do. <coughs> but you'll find out that the other way that we yeah, get into it. Yeah, you can get it another way that you Mm-hmm. There's two ways into that door. You can stick the dagger in it and twist. So let's look at these beans he gave us. You're holding a handful of small beans. What 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 story was the magic beans from? Um, a Jack and the Beanstalk. And so what did he do with the beans? He planted them. He planted them. You plant the magical beans in the fertile soil. Suddenly, something incredible begins to happen. Wait, did we get anything the king that wanted? Not yet. This mighty beanstalk stretches up so high it vanishes into the clouds above. All right, climb let's climb. Beanstalk. Here we go, up the beanstalk, just no, like that. No, his name is Beanie Stalk. Beanie Stalk. Yeah, Bobby Stalk. Oh yeah, Bobby Stalk. That's his dad, though. Ooh, let's save. 
just in case we fall. You can fall mm -hmm. on this. Can you name one of the save, saves, save? Okay. Looks like you had a bad fall this spring. <laughs> All right, let's go. Up. And they also called him Graham Cracker when he got baked into a gingerbread. Mm -hmm. the, the witch house. turns you into a Graham Cracker. <laughs> what? Into a gingerbread? Oh, you want to turn it into a gingerbread? Or should I say Graham Cracker? Yeah. Is that why he na they named him Graham? No. Because he can turn into a Graham Cracker? <laughs> Wait. Is his real name Graham? Is that, uh, is that if, she, if she catches you, she turns you into a gingerbread? Yeah. But we push her in, don't worry. <laughs> it's a lot easier when you can click your way up here. Alright, here we go. Can you fall through the clouds? Let's save just in case. You want to just call it save? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It is a mighty beanstalk which descends far below. And that's no! why we save. No, it's gonna be it's so far now. <laughs> Next time, keep your feet on the ground and your head out of the clouds. Clouds. It is rumored that a giant lives up here. Oh, he's dead. You're absolutely dead. It's possible. It's possible. It's a gold that egg. <laughs> we already have a gold egg. <laughs> I know, but in Jack and the Beanstalk, the giant has a gold egg. Yeah, so we, I was just going to say we need yet another gold egg. You are in the land of the clouds, oh boy. No, you have Sounds to give Sounds scary. The Look at the trees. You have to give the gold egg to him. I know. The wind is roaring. These gigantic, oddly shaped trees loom far overhead. Uh, he's scary. Okay. There is a chance that I may name something here Steve or Mom. Oh. Wait, how about that giant? That There's a giant Bob. here. The enormous giant has been carrying that heavy chest for longer than he can remember. Uh oh. You would just be dead. Yep. Or definitely smash. The giant did a smashing job of defeating you. So, how are we gonna deal with this giant? The gold egg. Gold uh, egg? Yeah, because you're gonna store it. It's up here. Oh. <laughs> Where did you walk into? <laughs> Where did you walk into? I just walked up to see what was up there and I died. Did you save? Yep. Yeah. So give him the gold egg? Yeah. Okay. The giant is in no mood for talking. The giant with his chest has all the treasure he needs. All he wants from you is to grind your bones to dust. Uh, 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 run! Ah! You had to run! Yeah. Do you know what to do? Well, let's look around a bit. Maybe we'll figure it out. I want you guys to figure it out. But we don't know how to figure it out. Yes, you do. you figured out plenty of things so far. Let's look around here. Because we, you helped us. I don't think we want to walk on those clouds. These trees have faces. These gigantic, oddly shaped trees loom far ahead. This is more creepier than anything. Oh, than Beetlejuice. How about creepier than when we were digging up graves in King's Quest 4? Ooh, look at this tree. It's a big hole. Oh, wait, everybody out there, 
Watch Beetlejuice. It's not creepy at all. <laughs> there is a hole at the bottom of one of the trees. Should we look inside? Look in hole. You see a slingshot in the hole. Go get the slingshot. Take the slingshot, man. Take the slingshot. You reach into the hole and pull out the leather slingshot. Nice. A shoe. Alright. I see a future. Not a good one, but Ooh. it's still a future. You see an if entrance to a cave future. within the mountaintop. Should we go in the cave or should we try to fight the giant first? Go into the cave. Maybe there's something good in there. Bop, bop. No! The cave first! If he comes after I you, he did. can't fit in there. You can, but okay. he can't. Yeah, but he's like. He weighs like 10,000 pounds. The suspended walkway seems he to wind forever down mountain. into the very bowels of the mountain. Did he like say owls or bowels? Oh, oh no! Whoops. Did he say owls or bowels? Owls. Bowels, okay. Before okay, we go owls. in there, let's see bowels. Let's see what we could do about that giant. Okay, Because that seems look. like a big place to explore. Wait, did you save the slingshot? Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. No, there's nothing up there. <laughs> So we don't want to go on those clouds. Um, yeah, keep your head on the ground. So <coughs> keep your feet on the ground and get your head on the clouds. Mm -hmm. So how should we defeat this giant? Well, you can you smash his head. No. You slingshot the giant. giant. You can use the pebbles. Yeah, that's what I did. You notice I didn't get too many points from doing it that way. There's actually a better way to do it, and I'm going to show you. Do you just tell us? Cause okay. You never know if it's going to work. Look what else I have here. Your hand tingles slightly as you look at this jeweled ring. Oh. Oh. I didn't really think of that. Wear ring. You place the shimmering ring upon your finger. What? <laughs> Invisible. Yeah, I don't look invisible, do I? Who's ring? Who's ring? What? It didn't work. He said it only. Wait, he's not going towards you. He doesn't see me. <laughs> I don't know. He said that ring makes you invisible. I thought that was the way to do it. Sometimes elves lie. Wait, but did you give the elf anything? No. He no. If you talk to him, he gives you a ring, and it's supposed to make you invisible. But it didn't. Oh well. The the way to to do it, and I believe it worked in the, in the original. You have to wait till he falls asleep. And if you're invisible, it's it's easy. You just stand there and wait because he can't see you. I'm going to try wearing the ring in the screen with him. But if, if you don't have the ring, then it's hard because then you have to just keep running away from him. try coming from the other side because there is a way to get him to fall asleep if you just keep running around that tree I'm surprised that the ring doesn't work because I think it works in the original version All right. Let's just use the slingshot. <laughs> that's, 
That seemed to work. Even though we won't get the full score at the end, that's all right. <coughs> but still try out the Take the chest. Now can you go? We got one of the magical treasures. It's easy to take a magic chest from a dead giant. But you can? Yeah. With a pebble? Yeah. You are dazzled by the countless supply of gold coins spilling from the magic chest. You quickly close the chest. So I have one of the first magical items in the game. How many magical items? I named, but I named him Bob, so. He's also named, Bob? <laughs> yeah. And then, um, if he has a wife, I'm naming her Steve. Mm -hmm. This magic chest, one of the three lost treasures <laughs> of Daventry, is always filled with gold coins. Wait, doesn't he have a castle? Nah, he doesn't. Um, well, where does he live? He lives up here, he just walks around. Oh, so he doesn't have a wife? No, he just likes his money and he walks around. Oh, then he's Steve. Hey, Steve. Alright, so now let's explore this cave. It's a lot better when you're on stuff like that and you can look. Yeah. Suddenly, a small dwarf runs out of the shadows and approaches you. Uh-oh. The sneaky little dwarf caught you by surprise. Did he steal anything from you? Yep. Yeah. What is he? He stole... The magic chest. chest. He stole magic the magic chest. Maybe you can get it back from him once you... Stop! Oh, I wish you fell on that little demon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where he hides his stuff, though, in this game. I don't know if there's a way to get it back. Um, there might be, but I don't know it. Uh, Alright, let's go. Let's see if we can avoid him. Maybe, maybe you could throw, maybe you could like throw something. The ring is already on your finger. Use ring. Turn invisible. What? Ring. Kiss ring. <laughs> Search ring. Lied to me, huh? It's not gonna work. And it's funny because I played this before and it did. Oh. Save. Hey, you got past the, the dwarf. Yeah, the dwarf didn't get me this time, at least. But you don't know if I'm gonna show up somewhere else. scary in real life? Yeah. Yeah, because in real life you can't see. Yeah, I don't see What would you do if you could save in real life? I would save before I try to die. So I would like to see how it feels to die. Just see what happens in the afterlife? Yeah. But then I would go back. What if you only had one slit save slot though? Where would you put that save slot? Beginning of your life or the end of your life or the end. The end. So then you only had that little bit to live. The beginning. The so end. Just all, all over Maybe that's how life really is. Maybe you do get only one save slot and it's right at the beginning when you're born. Oh yeah, maybe if that's so I would just But if you could save if you had multiple save slots you could save as much as you want. You can get away with a lot of stuff. People would be breaking laws left and right. <laughs> I really wish you could climb up that big stuff. I didn't realize it. I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. I was scared. Well, if you're a master at climbing. Yep, 
come from deep inside the mountain. There's a door there. Guess what door this is. That was the door down there. Mm -hmm. So we did go in. We just came in from another direction. All right. So now we've got two more magic treasures to find. we got to find the magic did mirror and the magic shield. Yeah, we got the magic chest. In there? Yeah, it was in the in cloud the land. No, it wasn't in the cave. Wait, so we didn't have to go in the, in the, in the cave? No. Did you hear that wolf? I heard a wolf howl. So did I. I was pleasant. <laughs> sounded like it was coming. Oh, well. Hmm. It, sound, it sounded oh, well. like it was coming from my house. I mean, yeah. Oh, well. You have encountered an old stone well in the middle of the woods. The well looks as if it's been here a long time. What should we do with the well, guys? Climb in. No, don't. Okay. Enter your bucket. No. After you are in the old bucket, your weight causes it to slowly descend. Did I do a favor? Now what should we do? Um... Gold, maybe, people use wells to... Alright, well, let's cut the rope and see what happens. We got the dagger, we can cut the rope. Dive, maybe? Take bucket. Manage to take the bucket. Fill bucket. With difficulty, you fill the bucket while swimming. So now we got a bucket full of water. You want to dive in? Yeah, dive. Let's hope that it gives you a... You have enough water. can see the bottom of the well below you. Oh look! There's some air up there. Yeah. Can I open this chest here? Save. You open the chest and admire the gold coins for a moment, then you close the chest. Oh, that's the wrong chest, I guess. Oh, you can go up there, there's air. Can I take this chest? This isn't the chest you're looking for, no. What chest are you looking for? Well, the one that we already have. Let's climb out. Okay. The magic mirror. Oh, I think I remember how to do this, I think. The ferocious fire-breathing dragon is protecting the magic mirror. Wait, is that one of the three things you have to find? Yep. And then the magic shield? Yep. Yeah. By venturing too close to the dragon's flame, you made an ash out of yourself. <laughs> now you have to dive down again. Oh, I see. So, how should we get past the dragon? Well, do you remember how? Oh, you can splash water! Mm-hmm. Green and scaly, the dragon's body is massive and muscular. A row of serrated armor stretches from the tip of its tail to the base of its neck. His leathery wings are folded tight against his sides, and his webbed claws look sharp and deadly. The ferocious fire-breathing dragon is protecting the magic mirror. Maybe you can throw water to mm -hmm. prevent him from... That's one way to do it. There's another way that doesn't get you as much points. You can throw the dagger at the dragon. Does it get you as much points? It gets not? you a little bit, but not that many. With a, with a, an unerring aim, the, the dragon streaks through the air and pierces the soft, unpro unprotected skin under the dragon's throat. The dragon convulses for a moment and then crashes lifeless to the hard cavern floor. Did he die? He died. But that's actually the bad way to do it. There's a better way to do it. Watch this. Throw water in dragon's mouth. Throw water at dragon. Good shot. The water hits the dragon square in the face, dousing the dragon's fire. Gold oh. mist he's generating. Now you can't find the mirror. Think he'll take the mirror with him? Look, he left. Unable to defend itself with anything more than harmless clouds of steam, the dragon rolls aside the granite boulder and slinks off in shame, leaving the mirror behind.
Yay. Take mirror. All right, Dad, my the mirror. Let's get out. You take the magic mirror. Congratulations. Well, this is the magic mirror, one of the three treasures of Daventry. As you gaze into the magic mirror, you see a reflection of yourself as king of this land of Daventry. Oh, so it's, um, it's kind of like in the Harry Potter book. It's like the mirror of mirror says, where when you look into it, it, it shows your path, it, well, it shows what you your want. happy life. Yeah. And I think this mirror tells the future, so it's telling Sir Graham that in, in the future he will be king. Alright, so now we got one more treasure to get. We need to get the magic shield. Do you know where that is? I do, in fact, but we're going to have to do some things first. First, we got to feed those poor people in that shack. How are you going to do that? We gotta find a bowl that's hidden somewhere in this land. A bowl? Mm hmm. A magic bowl. Oh, I thought you said a bowl. Like a bowl that you can make steak out of. No, I'm talking about a bowl. Can I take any of this stuff? Take, take gold. The gnome spun the gold out of straw. You can't take it, but don't worry. If you needed it, the gnome would give it to you. I can't go in his little house. If you weren't invited, you weren't invited to the little gnome's house. Alright, um... I wish the ring locked. Yeah, it's too... I, I, it used to work, and the other times I played it, it worked. But this time it didn't. It's weird. Here's where we found the ring. On this side of the thing here. I think the bowl is around this area. If I'm not mistaken. Maybe it's up here. Remember, it's an area with pine trees. Yep, there it is. Look on the ground. There appears to be some sort of bowl on the ground. Take bowl. <coughs> so you've got the bowl. <coughs> Where is it? What are you going to put in it? Ceramic bowl. Inscribed in the inside of this empty ceramic bowl is the word fill. Fill bowl. To your astonishment, something begins to bubble up from the bottom of the bowl. Within moments, the bowl is filled with hot, savory stew. Hey. People are gonna like that. Yep. So let's find these people. I think they are in this area here. It's to the left. To the left? Mm, not sure. There's that wolf again. Without warning, a wolf darts out of the bushes and runs straight for you. Look out! Don't let him catch you! <laughs> Do you want to be alive with your favorite animal? How many times have you been told not to hold Let's down run. your food? What's up here? Is it up here? I know. More rapids. Find your free. For now! Ow! Stop! You're ripping up my hair! No, dwarf, stay away. I hate that dwarf. He follows you? Yeah. There we go. Whose house is that? That's this is the woodcutter's house. Who's woodcutter's house? I believe it's this. Ooh, it's an axe. Take axe. The old axe is tightly wedged in the tree stump. You cannot remove it no matter what you do. There's a pump. Leave her alone. What? Don't do that. This is an ancient rusty water pump. It probably doesn't even work. It's not quite within reach, Sir Graham. Don't move around here. The rusty pump doesn't work. 
Yeah, that figures. Careful to couple. Mm -hmm. Cutter is overwhelmed with joy. Thank you, thank you, Sir Knight. We shall never forget your kindness and generosity. Please take my fiddle as a small token of our thanks. But a uh, fiddle is kind of like a violin. I know. Yay, let's play the fiddle. You play a lively toe tapping tune on the fiddle. The woodcover and his wife ignore your fiddling. Perhaps they preferred their own music. Okay. But now we're ready to go get the last treasure. And in order to get that... Where is it? It's, remember that area with the mushroom? Yeah. That we couldn't reach? It's there. But we have to fly to get there. How do you fly? We've got to catch a bird. Sometimes birds fly close to the ground. Yeah, and there is one place where that happened. Oh, no, the wolf. Okay. Hello, wolf. <laughs> okay. Hello, fish. Hello, fish. I think it's, it's actually in that area where we came out of the cave where the dragon was. It's in that, that area. That was the area. No, that's, that's the area that leads up to Cloud City. The city of the clouds. Now, you, in this version of the game, the chest, the uh, shield is always the last one you can get because the bird only comes after you've gotten the the items you need. So you, we got to get over there on that side um, to avoid dead ends because it's very easy to fall into dead ends. Oh no! Who's that? It's a wizard. He paralyzes you. You gotta stay away from him. Oh. Yo, the witch. Wait. The witch paralyzes you. No, the witch turns you into gingerbread. The wizard paralyzes you. Yeah, but she makes you silver. I think they both paralyze you. Oh. oh no, I'm thinking of um. Wait, is Silver the the one that um? He that the was the that was the slave. No, that that wizard. was Gwydion. Oh yeah. That's. King Graham's son. Sir Graham is a knight who becomes king at the end of King's Quest 1. This is King's Quest 1. This is the remake of King's Quest 1, the 1990 remake. I think it's up here. Oh, I thought that it was new. No, this game came out... It, the original came out in 1983, but this version came out in 1990, and I can't find... Was that the, uh, before we were born? Yes, 1990. It's an old game. Was it almost 2000s? 10 years um, from 2000. There we go. This is where it is. There it is. So we've got it. There it is. Now we've got to catch it. As you jump, the ring slips off your finger. Oh no! We don't have anything that. Uh, I lost the ring. Yes, we got him. So that's what you use the jump for, is to catch the condor. That's a condor. I thought that was a hawk. I thought it was a rainbow bird. <laughs> oh, wait, I thought you had to fly. Well, we did. We landed. Guess where we are right now? The other side? Mm-hmm. The other side. And now we can take this mushroom. The other side. Now, if you forget to take this mushroom and fall in that hole back there, you basically hit a dead end because there's no way out of that hole and you need this mushroom to get out. Because look what happens when you eat the mushroom. See? You become little Graham. But now I don't have mushroom anymore. So Why? you don't want to eat it yet because you you need that for later. And that, like if I f fell in that hole, this hole over here, with that without the mushroom, I Do would, you have the mushroom? I would be stuck in that hole forever because you need you need the. Did you? <laughs> Do you have the mushroom? Yeah, I saved before I ate it. 
Let's see. Mushroom. This is a small, unusual looking mushroom. So now we're in another cave. with a wooden door directly across from you. A giant mouse is standing in front of the door. Hey, I ain't no mouse, capiche? He's a rat. So what should we do? Well, <clears throat> you still have this slingshot. Who do you want to talk to? My friend, you looking for anything in particular? You want to pass through my little door here, right? Well, maybe we can work something out. What's it worth to you? So you want to use the slingshot on him? Could you still have it? Okay. Use slingshot on rat. You missed. Then again, you weren't aiming at anything worthwhile. So that didn't work. What else can we use? The dagger. Oh, wait, no. Oh, yeah. We could always give him gold. No. But then you're going to break the table. Come a little closer. I can't reach it. He's going to eat you. The rat grims cro crookedly, his long pointed fangs glistening in the torchlight. That's right, mister. Just walk a little closer. One shady character you shouldn't have tangled with. All right. You could use the dagger and throw it at him. Okay. In the dim light, your aim would suffer. Better find a less violent way to get past this dirty rat. Oh, maybe the fiddle. Oh, him. Where do you learn all of these made up words? You play a lively toe tapping tune on the fiddle. Serenade is a real word. Obviously, there's no music lovers here. You put the fiddle away. Okay, you could give the gold to the rat, but look at my points. Oops. Give walnut to rat. Some sort of treasure? Now you're talking, mister. Let me see some of that treasure. The rat... See, I lost points. The rat takes the treasure from your hand. So that's one way to get past him, but you'll lose points. There's a better thing to give him. Have any ideas? Oh, yeah, the... This is an extremely fragrant piece of Swiss cheese because he's a rat. He would like cheese, right? I was, I was thinking the mushroom, but. <laughs> cheese would love to. Give cheese to rat. Cheese? Well, yeah, now that you mention it, I guess I am kind of hungry. The rat drools at the sight of the cheese and snatches it from your hand. You might want to count your fingers. He got what he wanted. Oh no, what are you going to do? What are those? What's that? What are those? They're, it looks like they're leprechauns. 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 Look, man. You see nothing special. Look, leprechauns. They are tiny people dressed all green. Talk to leprechauns. Unfortunately, you don't speak the language of the little folk. With a genuine four-leaf clover in your possession, the leprechauns fear and respect you. Rather than risk offending you, they decide to leave you entirely alone. Now, that's one way to get past them, but you don't get points for that way. There's another way to get past them. Watch this. You eat the mushroom. Uh, what? Oh, that's right! They love music. Wonderful job! Leprechauns find fiddle music irresistible. The moment they hear the music, they begin dancing a frenzied jig. Finally swept away by the sa snappy music, the leprechaun guards poof right out of the room. That's why I needed to get the fiddle. 
Although I could have gotten past them with, with just the four leaf clover. Overhearing the fiddle music you played in the hallway, the leprechauns have begun to dance. As they do, they pop away in a fit of merrymaking. Rather simple throne. Upon it sits the Leprechaun King's jeweled scepter. The scepter could be useful. <coughs> what was that joke? What joke? Oh yeah. My my queen has has a scepter. Everyone works scepter. You take the Leprechaun King's jeweled scepter. This jeweled scepter belongs to the king of the leprechauns. He's got a lot of points for that. Does he get mad at you? You take the magic shield. Congratulations! Uh, he doesn't need it anymore. He's in happy land. I love that he danced away that way. <laughs> okay, so now we've got all three magic treasures. This is the magic shield, one of the three treasures of Daventry. Save. Don't you need the mushroom to get out? Yeah, you'll see in a second. See, look at that little hole. This small hole leads to the outside world. You are much too big to fit through that small hole. Okay, you have to hurry for it. Eat the mushroom. Go, go, go! Don't want to waste time in here, because if it wears out, I'll be stuck forever. That's what I said, you need the mushroom before you go in there, otherwise you're stuck forever. Congratulations! You now have all three of Daventry's lost treasures. Now don't waste any time. Bring the treasure straight back to King Edward before it's too late. Deserted. This area is usually filled with the ladies. Uh, get to read it. This is highly unusual. He begins to feel deeply disturbed as all is not right within the castle. You can faintly hear a commotion in the king's chamber to the west. There's nothing to be done. Our king's melancholy is too much for his heart to bear. Perhaps if Sir Graham had returned with the three lost treasures of Daventry... Oh, he rushes in there. <gasps> Sir Graham! He's returned! Did he find the treasures? Shh! Listen! 
Your Highness, I am at your service. Did you succeed in your quest? I did, Your Majesty. Here, as you commanded. The magic mirror. The magic shield. And the magic chest. It's too late for me, but you have done superbly, my knight. As promised, the kingdom is yours. Did he die? He's dying, yeah. I know you will serve her well. <laughs> the king is dead. Long live the king! <laughs> yeah, because there's a new king. And thus ended Sir Graham's great quest for the lost treasures of Daventry. Despite the loss of their beloved King Edward, the people of Daventry grew happy and prosperous and flourished for years to come. And we're at yeah. And whenever King Graham looked into his magic mirror, he saw visions of adventures yet to come for him, for his children, and for Daventry, the land he loved so much. The end. Yay! So, that was the remake of King's Quest. King's Quest 1, Quest for the Crown. Remade in 1990 with the new at the time, Sierra Creative Interpreter. We got a 152, which wasn't a full score. We would have gotten a full score, I think, if we had waited for the giant to fall asleep. But it was just going to be too hard and take too long, so I wanted to shoot him in the head. But uh, we did pretty good. We did. We got a good score. We had Fun three hours to yeah, we did. Uh, did a really nice quick let's play. I could probably just do it all in one episode, so. We'll just listen to the glorious King's Quest 1 music as it goes out. How'd you like it? Good game, right? So now you know how Graham became king. And then he has two children. Alexander and Rosella. Woody and was the name that the wizard gave him. Woody, but his real name is Alexander. Oh, it's a bicycle. The, the wizard named him. Wait, he captured the castle? When he was a baby, yeah. When he was a slave. But in King's Quest 3, you escape. You go back to Daventry. Rescue Rosella at the end of it. You guys didn't watch it? You didn't watch the Let's Play I made? I made with Gwen and Owen? You guys should watch that one. You'll find out. <laughs> I gotta buy that soda. So next time we will do King's Quest V. I'll try to do it with when Gwen is here, because I know Gwen likes to see what happens next. <laughs> so they remade this game. I think they planned on doing um, all of the King's Quests. <laughs> I think they planned on remaking all of them what? with the Sierra Creative Interpreter. But they uh, <laughs> they only did the one, and they remade the first Space Quest game too, and they only did that. I think I think there was kind of a backlash against these remakes. 
particularly by the creators, because uh, it wasn't these remakes weren't really made by the original creators. They were made by a different team, and they kind of felt like the original version is kind of like the definitive version. Like that's kind of the one that was groundbreaking. And I agree with them. You know, I, I prefer the original to any of the remakes, but it's still nice to to play the remakes after you play the originals just to see what they changed and how, how it was adapted to an upgraded system. And as I mentioned before, this game was remade one more time. Uh, not by Sierra, but by, uh, by a bunch of fans, uh, AGD Interactive actually, that's a little company. They're actually a gaming company, but they started off just by doing remakes and they actually remade the first three King's Quest games. Um, this one, they pretty much kept it, kept, kept it very similar to this, but it was with a point-and-click interface, uh, similar to this version. And then they remade King's Quest II, but instead of calling it Romancing the Throne, they called it Romancing the Stones. And uh, I think the reason they changed the name was because they changed the plot around a lot. They added a lot more plot elements. They made it a much bigger game. It's actually a lot of fun. It's definitely worth checking out. I might do a Let's Play of it one of these days. And they also did King's Quest 3, which was... It was a little bit different. It, like, they kind of added things, but... For the most part, it was pretty similar to the original King's Quest 3. So, definitely check out those remakes. If you like point-and-click versions of these games, if you're not a big fan of the parser interface, uh, you could definitely check out the AGD remakes, and they're done with VGA graphics, which is, these are 16 color graphics, all the games in the early ones were done with 16 color graphics, you, uh, but, uh, in 1990, uh, King's Quest V was the first game to have VGA graphics, which means it had 256 colors instead of the EGA, which had 16 colors, which is what these games had. So, it's definitely worth checking those games out, if, uh, just for the graphics alone, see how they updated with better colors, because VGA was a big deal when it came out, and definitely looks a lot better than 16 colors that you've been seeing in these games I've been playing, the early Sierra games of the 1980s. Alright, well, I think... This song is just going to keep repeating, so I'll end the Let's Play here. I want to thank you for joining me for Let's Play King's Quest 1. Hope you had a good time. Hope it wasn't too boring. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing this game. I, I always love these games. It's been a long time since I played this version. So, signing out.